And we do it with the assistance of some of the finest filmmakers in the world. When we come back, we'll begin right here in the United States, at a school where a pass or fail can also mean life or death. National Geographic Explorer is brought to you by the people of IBM who salute the explorers of the unknown and untried. Plymouth, a division of Chrysler Corporation. Plymouth, the pride is back. Born in America again. The Goodwill Games, July 1986. Cape Disappointment. The name's a bit of an understatement because it identifies a place that's also known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. Located at the mouth of the Columbia River in Washington State, Cape Disappointment is a treacherous ship killer. Appropriately enough, it's also the site of the Coast Guard's National Motor Lifeboat School. For the next 10 minutes, we'll experience the grueling training at the school, where the Coast Guard learns to fight against the waves to save human life. The history of this northern Pacific shoreline is a violent one. In the past two centuries, thousands of vessels have been claimed by the unforgiving sea. This is Cape Disappointment at the mouth of the Columbia River in Washington State. Waves thunder along this coast with force enough to register on earthquake sensors several miles inland. The wayward children of Asiatic weather systems, they pack energy that's traveled uninterrupted for thousands of miles. Here, a gathering of U.S. Coast Guardsmen ride steel-hulled boats through mountains of angry water. A 15-foot wave can drop more than a thousand tons of water on the boat, over 5,000 pounds of pressure per square foot. The Coast Guard has a slogan, you have to go out, but you don't have to come back. The truth of that phrase was sadly reinforced in 1961 when nine Coast Guardsmen died attempting a rescue in these treacherous seas. Uh, there was a case involving the uh, uh, fishing vessel Mermaid uh, with two uh, fishermen. The 40-footer was uh, sent out to uh, take it into tow. It was disabled. A uh, storm came in, uh, rendered the 40-footer uh, disabled. Uh, they sent the 52-footer with the 36-footer as backup, and in turn, throughout the whole storm, all were lost. As a result of the tragedy, uh, Coast Guard instructors like Brad Steigletter have been running a unique uh, academy at the Cape, the National Motor Lifeboat School. Okay, once he's on board, then you can go ahead and, and work your way out of the surf. Is there any questions? Learning to wrest lives and ships from the towering seas is the course of study. Coast Guard captains or coxswains come here from the U.S., Great Britain, and Canada for the ultimate in heavy weather training. Too far away. It'll be about seven, eight feet Classroom away. lectures end with what may be the world's most dangerous field trips. Specially insulated survival suits are required formal wear for these Coast Guard affairs. They hold in precious body heat should men go overboard. Without them, death from hypothermia could occur within the first 20 minutes of exposure to the frigid Pacific water. Fair lines off. Bring one in. The Coast Guard's 44-foot motor lifeboat is the workhorse of heavy surf rescue. Built of special high-strength steel, nearly a quarter of an inch thick, the 44-footer is a self-writing boat. None have ever sunk as this rare film clip illustrates. Humans are far more vulnerable. Crew members must tether themselves to the boat with two safety lines or risk being whipped about like toys. Far worse than a sideways rollover is an end-over-end -end tumble called pitch poling. Caused by a massive wave that strikes from behind, it demands special tactics. One method is to turn tables on the wave by riding along its crest and sliding down the back side as the swell continues on. And when it starts to pick you up, keep your power on, turn and pump it down to the low side. Oh. 
Another gut-wrenching maneuver involves recovering stranded boats from remote shorelines. Below the towering cliffs of a shallow, isolated cove, Steinbletter moves in as close as depth permits. Meanwhile, a school practice boat has been set adrift. Stretching a tow line ashore must be accomplished by human power. Soaked with water, it can weigh as much as 300 pounds fully paid out. Just reaching the shore is a victory in itself. The towing boat cannot drop anchor. It must remain free to respond to the changing seas. This bit of expert seamanship is called station keeping. This operation is often the only way to rescue injured civilians who run aground far from roads and ambulances. A 44-footer can tow them to safety, boat and all. The most crucial training involves human rescue at sea. One individual indirectly responsible for the number of lives saved is Oscar a dummy in a survival suit that embodies human life adrift in the water. Once in the heavy surf, Oscar is unceremoniously dumped. Getting him back aboard is a nerve-wracking trick. The student coxswain has to get close enough to recover Oscar, but coming too close in real life could be fatal. A helpless survivor could be crushed between a wave and the hull. Meanwhile, the victim could be slowly drowning. Oscar eludes his rescuers on their first pass. The trainee must time the next attempt with great care. Both wave conditions and the victim's position can change in seconds, fatally complicating recovery. what the boat can take, limitations of your crew, and uh, what your limitations are as your skills. And uh, this is basically what the school is there for. Set up, please. Correct. Thank you. Welcome so in. far, over 2,000 trainees have passed through this school. After additional tests in their local districts, they can become heavy weather coxswains. Now for the last one is the overall award. The Coast Guard saves an average of 6,000 lives a year. 50% of all search and rescue missions are performed by small craft like the 44-footers and the expert surf jockeys of this service. that a good deal of hope begins at Cape Disappointment.